Welcome back. Today we are going to do the most important thing. The very first thing you should do when you move to a new homestead, other than getting on your knees and thanking God for his provision. This is the second thing you should do when you move to your new homestead. Go get some junky pallets and throw them over your fence. It's the way, it's the way we do it here. Oh, that's beautiful. We'll make this one, we'll make this one the front. Got it. And those will be the sides. There. Get that bustedy one. And we'll make it one of the sides. Put it right there. All right. With the most slatted side inwards. What are we making? I didn't even know. You don't even know what we're making? No. Let's see. It only takes pallets and zip ties. I don't want to tell you anything. You can enjoy the wonder of our audience. Never saw this video before. You've never made a video like this. We really ideally should have the really long zip ties, but we don't. So there's this trick where you just stick multiple of the same type of zip tie together and then you make one super long zip tie. It's amazing. So we need a lot of them and just kind of keep Daisy chaining them together, like you do with your guitar pedals. Look at that, it's just as good as one, generally. It doesn't have to be super stable and structural, it just has to hold them up. Once they're up against each other, it's not that big a deal. Do you know what we're making yet? There we go. May or may not go around both of those. Whoa! Alright, so I got one more. Almost. This is the only one with five on it. That's intense. So what is it? Uh, looks like a compost pile to me. <laughs> it's a rat feeder. <laughs> I realized after moving in, we were eating some random food off of paper plates and I thought, what are we gonna do with these? We can't just throw them in the yard. There's gotta be something to enclose it to kind of keep general animals, at least larger animals and stuff out. And uh, this is like really important. So, and, and, and I, I've got all these bits of sod, which I'm gonna show you here why I have bits of sod. The cows are waiting on my cinematographer. That's what you're hearing. So if you saw the last video, this is the area where I'm going to be putting in my gardens. The grocery row gardens, the quick little row gardens, and then further back, orchard, maybe food forest. But I realized there is so much slab here. There's all kinds of slab that I didn't know was here. And so what we've been doing is pulling it all out. And one of my younger daughters asked if she could do that. She likes 
unrolling the grass like a carpet, she said. So we, we know that there's at least a sidewalk here and there's hunks of slab here and there. But as I was going, I said, you know, let's just take all of that grass and throw it in one pile, which then made me think, you know, all that pile should go into a pile where I could throw all of our paper plates and extra trimmings, etc. So that is why we made one of these real fast compost bins just now. This is one of my favorite ways to make a compost bin quickly. If I'm renting, if I'm just getting a garden going, or if I am working out in a field situation where I'm borrowing a bit of land uh, and I need a place to kind of contain some stuff, you can go even simpler and just hammer some pieces of stake or rebar into the ground, hammer some wood posts, cut yourself some saplings or whatever, and just kind of make a rough few posts. There's some slab right there. And you just kind of go four feet, four feet, four feet, four feet, and then just start layering stuff inside of it. If you've got greens and browns, layer them appropriately. But if you don't, it doesn't really matter. You can see I've got this great soil already, and I want to put this grass down on the bottom so it gets killed out over time. There's even some Bermuda in here. And you know how Bermuda grass is. Hopefully if it's at the bottom, it dies. And if not, and I pull this compost pile apart and it's all full of weeds, I'll just throw it around some of my trees or I'll put it in swamp water. You can usually get pallets for free behind hardware stores, appliance stores. I got this set of pallets a few minutes ago from behind Ace Hardware. And I like the ones that have slats that are as close together as possible. But that's it. That's how easy it is. And composting doesn't have to be a big pain in the neck. Even when you have good soil, it benefits from having humus. I finally have good soil, so this humus is gonna be even better than in that sandy, nasty grit that I had before. It, it's like this magic fifth element in the ground. If you don't have enough humus, if you don't have your compost, things just don't grow right. And it's not really exactly, you know, how many nutrients are in it. If you did a nutritional analysis, it doesn't say that it's better than 10, 10, 10. It's much lower in your essential nutrients, but it has this extra effect of giving health to the soil, giving water absorption to the soil, and, and its fertilization is probably the least of the benefits of compost. If there's good humus in the ground, everything just behaves better. Leaves are glossier, disease problems are less, pest problems are less. There's this huge ecosystem going on inside of compost, so when I strip all this grass and everything up and I throw in kitchen scraps, the minerals are going in there, but it's also breeding this ecosystem of fungi and bacteria and all kinds of micro life that just makes everything happy, plus that indefinable, amazing humic acid molecule that's in there. It's astounding, but it can be really simple. So if you're interested in learning more about composting, obviously check out my book, Compost Everything, The Good Guide to Extreme Composting. You can read the reviews on Amazon. People like it because it takes all of the pain in the neck out of composting. Catch you all next time. Thanks for joining me. Glad to be back. And until I see you again, may your thumbs always be green.
I have no idea how far this slab goes. We've already uncovered a big hunk of it. This uh, building that's right next to me, we will feature that in an upcoming video. It's a old spring house. It had an artesian well running up inside of it and there was a dairy and they would use it to chill their milk. The water would flow through and it was cold from the ground and they would put their milk in there and chill it. So there's a lot of old history here and we really keep finding pieces of slab and I'd like to just kind of clear it all up and know where I'm going, especially as I'm getting ready to dig garden beds. I think it would be neat to uncover a lot of this old slab and clean it up and then work around it and maybe put some, some pots on it or I don't know, put a little picnic table out here or something. Kind of just depends on what we have and what kind of condition it's in. But it just keeps going. There's pieces in here everywhere. So we've already uncovered all the way from where my cinematographer is standing out to here. And there's even this old cultivator out here which needs a new wheel. It's seen better days. It's not functional, but every time I come out here and thump around, I think there's a still here, still here, still here, still here. There's a sidewalk to something. There was a building out here. Still sidewalk, still sidewalk, still sidewalk, still sidewalk. More here. So, we shall see. Just an interesting little pinned on addendum for you guys. We're doing a little archeology span and it's, it's really kind of fun. It's sort of, uh, it's therapeutic. Just peel the grass off of old foundation and see what we have. Find a little history out here. Catch y'all later.